Hello, everybody. This is um, Mackenzie Livingston, and I am the Recruitment and Communication Director at Aurora Central Catholic High School. And I do have some students popping on. Hi, Carla. How are you? Can you hear me? Oh, Carla's on mute. That's fine. You shouldn't be. Um, if you guys don't mind typing in the little chat button and just let me know that you can hear me okay. I want to be sure that we're all set and ready to go to start exactly at 7. Carla, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, good. Awesome. For a minute, I think your mic was on mute. And I was like, oh no, I hope she can hear everything. Awesome, okay, you guys. Um, we do have one other student that's gonna pop on too, um, but I definitely don't want to keep you guys, uh, you know, I want to make sure that I, you know, start this presentation on time. And we typically, this is our fourth or fifth one that we're doing, we typically don't go past 7.30. So we should be able to get everything in in about 25 to 30 minutes. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and get started. I will introduce myself and then Carla, if you wanna kind of share um, just a little bit of information with everybody, including your grade and a couple of things that you're involved in. Hi, Alexis. Hello. How are you? Good. Good. Um, so I'll have both of you do that actually. That way, all of our participants know um, what year you ladies are and um, some things that you're involved in. And then at the end of the presentation, you will have the opportunity to share with everybody um, your favorite part about ACC, why you chose it, and then uh, pieces of advice that you would give to middle school students then moving into high school. Does that sound good? Yep. Yes. Awesome. Okay, so I'll go first and I'll start us off. So my name is Mackenzie Livingston and my title is the Communication and Recruitment Director. So essentially what I do is I help all of the families decide if ACC is going to be the right fit for them. So it's really nice because I get to meet so many people and um, I do a variety of events such as open houses, which normally are at school, obviously. We're doing these virtually to keep everybody safe and healthy. Um, but aside from that, we do a lot of different parent recruitment events as well. Um, I also host the placement exam, which I will talk about what that means and registration and all that fun stuff. And then any communication that goes out to the community and, and parents and family members comes from my office. So that could be anything from emails to social media. So that's kind of what I do. Um, so girls, if you wanna go ahead and introduce yourselves, Carla, why don't you start us off and then Alexis, you can go next. Okay, so hi, I'm Carla Rodriguez. I'm currently a junior at ACC. And what I'm involved in is there's honestly so much to get involved in at ACC. So like one of the main things is like key clubs, student ambassadors, um, National Honor Society, and then I'm on the basketball team as well. Awesome, thank you so much. Okay, Alexis, go ahead. Okay, so my name's Alexis and I'm currently a senior. I'm involved in key club, NHS, and then student ambassador. Awesome. So as I mentioned, thank you girls. Also, if you ladies want to jump in at any point when I'm talking about anything, um, specifically the block scheduling, I think it's really important that parents and students hear your perspective. So when we get to that part, feel free to jump in. Um, but at the very end, everybody will have a chance to ask you questions too. So I'm actually going to share my screen right now with everybody because I do have a Prezi presentation that I want to show you all. Um, just so that way it kind of flows nicely. And I'm a very visual person, so I assume a lot of other people are as well. And this is being recorded. So um, if you want to ever go back and re-watch it, I will be uploading it to our ACC YouTube site, which is also going to be published on our website. So if you have any friends or um, other members from Pope John Paul II Academy that you know might have missed tonight, you can always encourage them to go re-watch what we discussed today. So um, really quick, a couple of fast facts about ACC is that our mascot is called the Chargers. We are, our colors are blue and gold and we are co-ed. So that means we have both boys and girls. 
We have about 500 students total in the whole school, but we really try to keep our class sizes at about 19. That seems to be kind of like the sweet spot and the sweet number to make sure that students are not intimidated to ask questions and the teachers really get to know the students on a personal level, which always helps them grow in, in, you know, in their academic um, while they're there at ACC. So I always tell the students, you know, your teachers are so committed to you because they could teach anywhere, really. I mean, they chose to, to work in a Catholic school, and so they're so passionate about it that the block scheduling, which I'll talk about in a minute, but our curriculum in general, really kind of um, navigates the teachers and the students to create that really great relationship so that everybody, you know, is on the same page and, and students have a great rapport with their teachers. So um, we are college prep, and so we are a college preparatory school, which means day one, we are helping our students prepare for whatever it is that they want to do after uh, high school, specifically college, okay? And we can do that in a number of different ways, both inside and outside the classroom. But I do think it's a really, really important thing to remember is that throughout high school, and girls, you can even take this advice while I'm saying it, but throughout high school, it's really your journey. It's your choice to take specific electives, which are classes that, which I'll show you here in a second, are classes that you get to pick to decide, hey, I really like this area, or I really didn't like that class. That's definitely not a subject I'm going to be studying as a major in college. So it's, you know, you want to take your time to really focus on you while you're in high school. Okay, and ACC does that in a variety of ways. So outside the classroom, we have 19 different sports to choose from. We have 23 different clubs and organizations to choose from. And the cool thing is that if there isn't a club listed on here that your student is interested in joining, it's very easy to, to start a club. Um, and all the student would have to do is have a couple friends who might be interested in starting a club, have a teacher be their moderator, and then they can create it. So that's a really nice way that we're able to support any student and really create anything that they are interested in. So those two things were obviously outside the classroom, um, but then as far as inside the classroom goes, here is a brief list of some of the electives that students can choose from, um, and these are taken freshman through senior year. So we really do our best to make sure students that have at least one elective per semester. Sometimes it's more um, depending on the students academic levels and capabilities and just kind of how it maps out in the schedule, um, but it's, it's really great because we have so many different ones to choose from, including AP classes, which I'll touch on in just a second. Um, but one of the things that, honestly, it's the biggest thing I think that sets ACC apart from any other high school in the area is our block scheduling. So I'm gonna explain what the block scheduling is. Um, obviously there's a couple bullet points there, but in a nutshell, a student takes four classes every single day, Monday through Friday for an hour and a half. Okay, um, and that student then when they go to school in August, they take those same four classes every day for an entire semester. Then the students will go home for Christmas break and they'll come back the first week of January and participate in something called PBL, which is project based learning. And that's really kind of like a wrap up of the semester, but in a project format. So then after that week is over, um, they then will get a brand new set of four classes for that total of Eight that your traditional schedule like in a public school um, would give you. So it's awesome because it really does serve two different types of learners. So the reason we do block scheduling is so that we can accommodate and accept no matter where they're at academically. It's very rare that we suggest that a student maybe look elsewhere just because maybe we don't have the correct resources to help them. Um, but like I just said, it is very rare and the block scheduling helps so many kids. So the first one that it serves are for those learners who might need a little bit of extra time in their class to ask those, the teacher questions to really absorb and understand the material. Because truthfully, and girls, you can kind of back me up on this, the teachers truly don't want to be lecturing for a full hour and a half, right? It's usually maybe about 45 to 50 minutes. Um, that second half of class is dedicated either to group work or, you know, question time or working on homework. So girls, do you agree? Is there anything you wanna add? 
Um, yeah, I would agree with that. Like mostly all my classes at the end of them, we would be able to like work in groups or if we had any questions on the lesson. And it's really helpful, honestly, to have time so you don't have as big of a workload when you get home. Yes, so true. Alexis? Yeah, I definitely feel the same way. It just allows like more room to actually ask questions and like not have to just do it all by yourself. Like when you get home, you actually like have a longer period of time to understand the material and go through it like slowly and at like a great. Awesome. Yes, because I, I would say there's no worse feeling than feeling like you rushed through an entire lesson to then go home and have to teach yourself the lesson. Like there, what would be the point of attending class, right? So that's why the block scheduling is so great because the teachers have enough time to make sure that the students are understanding the curriculum. Um, so that's the first student it serves. The second student it serves are for those who maybe want to double up and work ahead in their academics. So the best way for me to explain this, and did either of you do this? Did you yeah, I did. You did. Okay, so I'll ask you to give your example in a moment, but the example that's easiest for me to explain is, let's say your student takes Algebra 1 freshman year first semester, okay? Then they decided, I want to double up in math which means they then could take geometry second semester of freshman year and be done with a sophomore level math class by the end of their freshman year. And the reason students do this is number one, to kind of double up and obviously get those classes out of the way to then make room for either more electives or AP classes, which we have over 12 of those to choose from when they become juniors and seniors so that they can actually earn college credit but by the time they graduate. Um, I remember sitting in our senior awards banquet two years ago and a student actually graduated with their associate's degree from their high school graduation because they were able to double up so much and take so many AP courses and dual credit college classes that they were done um, with their first two years of college, which is amazing. So, Carla, what did you do? Um, I did like basically we just explained I double I've doubled up in math every year so far. So now, right now, I'm in trigonometry, and next semester, I'll be in stats at Wabonzi. So I'll be getting that double credit, as you explained. Awesome. Awesome, awesome. Very cool. All right. And then, just to kind of go over, like, day-to-day -day things, aside from block scheduling, obviously, each class is an hour and a half, but you get 25 minutes for lunch with five-minute passing periods, and the day starts at 8 and ends at 2.50. So that's the length of school in general. And I will say, so since we can't be in school in person, if you would like to visualize school, the easiest way to do that is the first floor is a circle, the second floor is a U with a staircase right in the middle, and then locker wings kind of on either side. So what's nice about that is you're not going to get lost. <laughs> I know that that's a very common freshman nerve is what if I can't find my class? What if I can't open my locker? And what if I just get completely turned around and lost? If you do, it's okay. Someone, I mean, everybody is so kind and helpful that somebody will be willing to help you with your locker or show you your class. So I don't want that to be a worry for you. Um, it is not a big school. You definitely will be okay. Right, girls? Yes. Okay, good. Glad we're all on the same page. All right. So I always say um, no matter if I'm talking to a student or a parent, that whenever you're making a high school decision, whether that be for your son or daughter or for yourself, you want to make sure that you pick a place, number one, that feels like home, and number two, where you can actually see yourself or your student being successful and making sure that that institution has the necessary tools for them to accomplish everything that they want to accomplish by the time that they graduate high school. Um, and these two statistics that I'm going to share with you first. The first is 100% of our students who apply to a four-year college or university get accepted. And that is amazing. And there is a reason for that. And the reason for that is because starting freshman year, the conversations are starting with our counselors and our students that early on about, hey, what is it that interests you? What do you like? What do you want to do? Do you have a dream job? What are your goals? You know, those conversations are starting so early on that in order for students to even register for the, the classes for the following year, they have to meet with their counselor. So it's almost like 
you really don't have an option to be not successful um, because there are people there to, to help and monitor what it is the students are doing and needing. So um, the counselors are great at getting to know the students and they're able to gear them toward the colleges and universities that will best fit their interests and, and they have the most chances of actually being accepted. So that's why that percentage rate is literally as good as it gets, 100%. Secondly, kind of going along with that are scholarships. And I know it seems like such a far time away thinking about college scholarships, but um, there's a lot of them and it can be kind of overwhelming. And unfortunately, I don't have the class of 2020 statistics yet just because we weren't able to actually implement the um, data like structure that we, we give those seniors because they're in school. So I will share with you the class of 2019 stats, and that is that combined, they received a total of $9 million in scholarships to the colleges or universities that they're attending. And I can also tell you that that is for sure not a full report because not every single student filled out the data that we asked them to fill out. So I know that that's not a complete number. So it is more than that. Um, but that's that's amazing and, and wonderful. So again, our counselors will help our students decide how to how and when and what to apply for for scholarships based on their college and university. Um, and we also use a tool called Naviance that students will have access to um, to help them with their college search process. So girls, are you using that yet? Like for um, application? Yeah. Yeah, right now, currently, it's the whole process because I am a senior, so I definitely need to like be more on top of it, and I can do so by having my counselor. She's definitely like been there and helped me like fill out things. Some of the easiest questions I just didn't really know how to like understand, or, like my parents didn't really either because they didn't really attend college, so mm -hmm. they're definitely there for you, even if you're like first generation or you have no idea where to start. Yes, exactly. I was the exact same way. <laughs> I, I didn't know what to do or where to go and the counselors yeah. were, you know, they're the ones that are there. You could just walk in and say like, I want to go to college, but I don't know where to start <laughs> and they will help you. So um, that's a wonderful, wonderful thing. Carla, do you want to add anything or no? Um, no, not really. I haven't really gotten okay. that part of it anymore. That's okay. That's okay. Just, I wanted to make sure. So um, lastly, and this I just mentioned to people because I don't want it to, um, you know, not be considered, but sometimes families do decide that ACC isn't the right fit for them from the beginning. So they go to another school and they actually decide that was not the right fit for them. So I want to make you aware that every single year, about five to 10% of our student body do um, consist of transfer students. So we do accept transfers. It's typically um, pretty easy to accept a freshman and a sophomore transfer. Sometimes it can be a little bit more tricky though because of our block scheduling and that is not a traditional schedule where the majority of schools are on a traditional schedule. So um, you would work closely with our assistant principal, Mr. Meyer, to make sure that your schedule would work out and you can graduate on time. But I did wanna throw that out there that if you do choose a different option, we are always still here and, and willing to accept your student. Um, now for tuition and financial aid. I will make this quick. I'm actually going to show you on our website where you can locate the tuition numbers just so that, you know, if you ever have a question or don't remember what the fees are and whatnot, you can find it. So I literally just went to the admission tab and I, I clicked on tuition and financial aid, which brings you here. So um, if you, and for the most part, I'm assuming that because you all belong, are sending your students to um, Pope John Paul II Academy, that more than likely you probably belong to one of our supporting parishes here in bold. So if that is the case, you then would qualify for the tuition parish rate, which is $1,000 less than the non-parish rate. So that is a wonderful um, subsidized price that our parishes have um, so kindly offered <laughs> to kind of fill the gap um, between that for their parishioners, which is great. So that's our, our fee for this year. Um, you'll see a little note that in November is when next year, so if you are watching and you have an eighth grader, I don't know for sure what that total number is going to look like. However, I can tell you that in the past, and I've been at ACC, this is my fifth year, in the last five years, it has always consistently only gone up $200. 
every single year. So as long as that is continuing to be the trend, you can at least estimate that this number here for one student will be $6,325. Um, that number does not include these fees listed here, mainly because those are you know, very specific to a family or um, a student depending on how many sports they want to play or if they're a senior. So um, all of this is, you know, built into our tuition program um, management system that we use called Smart Tuition. So don't even worry about that. We'll get you onboarded onto that once your student is actually registered. So um, the one very, very important thing that I want to point out is I highly encourage every single family, no matter what your um, financial status might be, is to that you, you should definitely apply for our financial aid. And the reason for that is because we do not have like a special graph that we look at that says, well, if you make this much or you are involved in X, Y, or Z that you will or will not qualify because it is based on the pool of applicants every single year. So you will apply for financial aid every single year because we also realize that people you know, family financial situations change often, especially now during COVID. Everything seemed to be, you know, kind of completely tossed up and, and kind of a whirlwind. So, and, and we recognize that. So we try to help as many families as we can. Um, so definitely apply for that. You can do so as early as November 1st, but no later than May 1st. So that is a deadline to keep in mind. And you would literally click this link here that says NAIS, and that'll take you directly to the website to fill out the application. It will take about 30 minutes. So I always encourage people to make sure that they have enough time set aside to do that. Um, and then you will, you will upload a tax return. So you can use one from last year to kind of fill its spot until you're done with taxes for the following year. And then you can just upload the new document. Okay. And then lastly, in talk, actually two more things about the financial aid piece is we do offer a student work program, which is wonderful because then students are able to have a hand in their education. A lot of colleges do this. And so students can work before or after school during Christmas or summer break or even during spring break, and they can earn minimum wage to, to then put that toward their tuition bill. And it's great because I think that it really makes them feel like, hey, I'm contributing to my education they tend to work harder because they know what a sacrifice it is for our for their parents to send them to a Catholic school. It's a privilege and it's hard work to get there. And that is why we provide this program because we want students to realize that, you know, this is not something that everybody gets to experience. So um, that is great. You Typically students and families who qualify for financial aid will get first dibs in the student work program. But if your student does not qualify for financial aid, they still can be a part of the program. You just have to reach out to um, the program coordinator and his name is Bill Kipper. But don't worry, we'll give you all that information later on. Um, and now lastly, our scholarships. So scholarships are um, right down here, if you were, I'm not gonna click it, but if you were to be interested in learning about the scholarships, it can be found right here. And that is based on our placement exam. Oops, I'm sorry, I'm gonna skip ahead one slide. Um, our placement exam takes place this year on Saturday, December 5th. It is from 8 a.m. until 12 p.m. There's a $30 fee associated with that, and you can um, go register your student right now if you want for that, so you get it out of the way. Uh, and actually, you will receive a follow-up email after this open house with a direct link so that you can, it, it's nice and easy, you don't have to go search for it, it's right there. Um, so scholarships are based on the results of that placement exam on that date only. There is an alternative date in January, but that date does not qualify students for a scholarship. Okay, so there's that. Um, parent tours also will be available during the placement exam as well that you can sign up for. Again, a link will be emailed directly to you so you don't have to go hunting for it on our website. Um, and then I also encourage students to do a shadow day. You can certainly shadow Carla or Alexis or anybody else at ACC that you might know. Um, and if you don't know, if your student doesn't know anybody, I am more than happy to pair them up with one of my student ambassadors, which these ladies are student ambassadors, but I usually try to pair them up with students who have similar interests. So that way they have things in common and things to talk about throughout the day. And right now, those are being offered on Tuesdays and Fridays only. Um, I am booking out until the middle of November already. Um, and 
because we are only allowing one student to shadow per Tuesday or Friday unless they attend the same school. And this is all due to COVID. That is not typically what we do. Um, typically, I'd have like 12 students shadowing in one day, but we don't want to cross contaminate the, the communities and the schools that the students have come from and then coming into ACC. So that's why we're doing it that way. And that's why it's so limited. Um, and then registration happens later in January. So you don't have to worry about that. But I do want to go back um, one slide really quick, just because we didn't talk about the laptop and the technology, you may have seen the fee listed when I was showing you the different fees, but every single student does receive a laptop when they become freshmen here at ACC. So next year, we officially will be completely one-to-one. -one. Um, our seniors are the only class that were that do not have to have the laptops that we provide. Um, but we are offering the Acer Travelmate Spin laptops, and that is a full $20 one-time fee. You do not pay that every year. You pay it once, and once it's complete, it's your student's laptop to, to keep forever. So um, you, after they graduate, they can keep it, sell it, whatever they want to do, it is yours. Um, but does come fully loaded. We use Office 365 software um, and Microsoft. So that is, you know, it, you don't need to put anything on it. It comes with everything that your student will need to complete homework assignments and projects and tests while they're at ACC. Okay. So before I get to the girls' perspective and, and having them share some wise words of wisdom, I just kind of want to leave with one final thing. And that is that if your student is attend ACC, us as a school community as a whole, our main goal is to make sure that by the time they get to that graduation stage, they number one, have a very full understanding of what it is that they want to leave their mark in this world. So lifelong learning. Did they grow in their spirituality if that was something that they wanted to do? Our goal is to make sure we give them enough tools and support to do that. And third, just preparing them for the future because everybody's is so different, whether they wanna go into a branch of the military or go into the workforce right away or go on and be you know, a college graduate, whatever it might be, we are going to help them get there. So I wanna kind of leave you with that. Um, but before we hang up, I definitely wanna give the girls an opportunity to kind of share, um, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen, but I would love for you girls to share with everybody, you know, why did you choose ACC? What is your favorite part about ACC? And also any advice that you would give to sixth, seventh, or eighth grade students going into high school? Who wants to go first? It doesn't matter to me. Um, okay, I'll start. So okay. I chose ACC mostly because it is co-ed, unlike other private schools around the area. It was something that was different. And it was honestly something important for, to me to like not just only be with only girls or only boys. Mm -hmm. And obviously also the block schedule was a big plus just because I like the idea of only having four classes instead of eight. Mm -hmm. And then um, my biggest piece of advice would honestly be like, I feel like everyone says this, but it's so true to just get involved into whatever you can. Like, even if you're like scared, you're not going to like a club or whatever, there's like no pressure. If you join a club and you don't like it, it's okay. You can just like mm -hmm. tell the moderator, whoever it is that you don't like it. And honestly, I've liked every single club I've joined at ACC. So I honestly say that's my biggest piece of advice. Awesome, good advice, thank you so much. Okay, Alexis, your turn. Um, so personally why I chose ACC, a big part of it was coming from a private school. I was so used to like having my faith be like, such like involved in my life. And I definitely wanted that to like continue without it like being something that I had to constantly go out of the way for. And mm -hmm. I liked how ACC definitely involved, you know, masses or, and even if like they weren't Catholic or, you know, every kid gets like involved in some way through like the church. So that was like a big part of why I chose it. Mm -hmm. And then honestly, my advice, like Carla said, is definitely to join, experiment with different classes, you know, whether that's taking electives that you think that you would never try before. You know, your counselors are there to work with you to like, if you end up not liking that class, you can like drop it and try a different class, you know in like the first week of that semester and stuff. So I definitely think just to like get involved and just join in general. Yes, absolutely. And I will say too, um, as freshmen, but the, both girls said, 
that their advice would be to get involved in some way. And so as freshmen, that could be kind of intimidating, right? Because you're like, I don't even know what clubs I can join. So what we do is we offer a program or an event more so called Charge in ACC. And that happens a week before school starts where all the freshmen come together. We had to do it a little bit differently this year. We got creative, <laughs> um, but we do laptop distribution. And then every single club has a presence in the cafetorium and also kind of along the hallways, just like we would have at a normal open house. And you can walk around and see what clubs are being offered so that you kind of get an idea of the different things. You can talk to students there. You can talk to the club moderator to learn what it is that that club entails. And then you can sign up to attend the first meeting. You can go to the first meeting, decide if it's for you. If it's not, you just don't respond again to the email or you ask them to take you off. Or if you want to join it, then you just continue going to the meetings. So it's a nice way to kind of invite freshmen from the get-go to become involved because it's so important. And, and I definitely agree with, with both ladies who mentioned that because that is something that you, number one, it looks good on college applications, but that's not everything, right? It, it really does mold you into, you know, learning how to work with others aside from group projects in your class. But then you also get to kind of, you know, either give back in community service because a lot of our, our clubs are focused around that, um, especially Key Club, which did both of you say you're involved in that or just Carla? Yeah, we're both. both of you. Okay. Mm -hmm. so, um, that's a huge one. I mean, there's so many different, so many different types of clubs. So I definitely agree with both of them on that. So. Does anybody have any questions? You please feel free to type it either in the Q&A icon or the chat icon. Um, my contact information is on the website and it will also be in the follow-up email that you will receive. Um, so if you wanna schedule a shadow day or if you have questions about financial aid or the placement exam or scholarships or anything, I am definitely here to answer them. That is my job and I'm more than happy to do that. So please feel free to either call or email me. And ladies, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. Um, both of these girls are student ambassadors. So they help promote ACC and share their story and post um, shadow visits and help with recruitment visits like what we're doing now. Um, if there's ever a special guest that comes to ACC, my student ambassadors help with that. Um, and you know, they, they do a wonderful job and I couldn't do mine without them. So thank you guys both so much. They do get service hours because that's something we didn't talk about. Um, our students have to have 100 service hours by the time they graduate. So that's 25 hours per year, which is, do you guys feel like that's easy to achieve? Yeah. Yes. So like even tonight, you know, they're gonna get probably I'll give them an hour of service because we kind of prepared a little bit beforehand and that, you know, they're spending their after school time helping me out. We always have different ways that students can receive service hours other than going somewhere. Yes. So, all right, I don't see any questions. So I think we're gonna go ahead and end this, but thank you so much. And we cannot wait to welcome your students and all of you to the ACC family. Have a great night. Bye ladies. Thank you. Bye.